You may have heard about a monophonic lead and bass synthesizer called Monique. I have some exciting news. It's gone open source. Let me show you. This is Monique. It's a monophonic synthesizer intended for basses and leads. It has a built-in arpeggiator. It has an interesting oscillator. You can also go FM. learned all the ins and outs of the synthesizer so I can just give you a brief demonstration and I'm going to mostly rely on the included factory presets. Monique used to be a commercial synthesizer um, but now it has been open sourced and it's developed further by the Surge team together with Tom the original developer which already works on the Surge synthesizer, the Stockus randomizing sequencer and now also Monique. We can take a look at its uh, GitHub page. You can see the repository is under Surge Synthesizer. <laughs> to download this synthesizer, you need to go to releases and there is this nightly. Even though the date on that doesn't seem to be every night, but it is, trust me. Uh, but this is what I'm using. I've downloaded this version. It's also available for Windows and Mac OS. And you can download the source code if you want. I'm gonna give this a URA as well. Monique Monosynth. Monique is a monophonic synth from Thomas Arndt which in December 2021 became open source as part of the Surge Synth team family of products. We are thrilled Thomas chose to combine efforts with the rest of the team. One of our earliest to-do items as we open source the synth is to write this readme properly. Just like with the rest of our team projects, we welcome any and all contributions from anyone who wants to work on open source music software. At the initial open sourcing, the copyright to the Monique source was held by Thomas. When open sourcing, we had several projects, including a potential iOS port, which meant we had to think hard about licensing. As such, we have decided that Monique should be dual licensed, GPL free and MIT. And some contexts such as the binaries, which, will, which you will one day be able to download here for Linux, Mac and Windows, well, there are so far the unstable, like, preview nightly builds, but they are available. We are using the GPL-free version of Juice, which is the framework to making plugins, or audio plugins. But we may want to also release in situations where open source is still possible, but GPL-free is not, and then want to use the MIT license. What they are saying is the synthesizer is available under two licenses. The GPL Vita Free license is a, I would say, um, radical open source license, which means it enforces uh, people using the, the software on this license to um, do some things. Basically, you can't just take this and do whatever you want. It has to stay open source. You can't close the sources. While the MIT is like a soft, uh, open source license where it really doesn't care about anything. You can just do whatever. And that is uh, interesting because this means that, for example, a game engine, an open source game engine like Godot, which uses the MIT license, could harvest uh, source code from Monique to do some things, like maybe port its filters and as internal Godot audio effects, or maybe it's reverb or whatever, you know that kind of thing, which is very good. 
and I like that. So some people all take issue with the MIT license, and I understand that because it's possible for a corporation to, or a company or whoever, to just grab the project, uh, do give it a facelift or just change the logo and name, and release it as a commercial proprietary product without even having to disclose where does the product actually come from or what the source is. So that is unfortunately a tool for scammers to do scams and technically be legal with that. And, you know, you can, like, register your trademark, your, your product name or whatever, and then you can, like, um, chase legal action based on infringement of your trademark. But if they change the, the branding, there is, I don't think there's much you can do. Of course, this is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, this is just how I understand these things uh, for my personal needs. As a result, we are asking individual contributors who want to contribute to Monique Monosynth to sign a CLA, which means a Contributor License Agreement. We have used the Canonical slash Harmony 1.0 CLA with the following choices. One, you retain copyright to your code. We do not need you to assign copyright to us. Two, you grant us a license to distribute your code under GPL3 or MIT and your content under CC3 Attribution. CC Free Attribution is a <laughs> Creative Commons license uh, which demands uh, that um, if you use the content, which could be, you know, music, graphics, um, photographs, whatever, uh, anything that can be said is, is content or artistic work because uh, source code and software uh, programming is considered something else and it has its own suitable licenses like GPL, Free, and MIT. So, um, yeah, in the game project I'm working on with a small team, there's a, right now there are seven people, including myself, uh, we, are, we have chosen to license our game under AGPL, which is a special GPL license that also makes sure your server-side software is open source, not just the client-side software, and specify that the content, so game assets, music, uh, sound effects, graphics, everything, is licensed under Creative Commons by same agreement. So uh, that license enforces that if you use uh, the content licensed under CC by SA, so same agreement, you also have to release your derivative work under the same license, which is kind of like GPL, because it enforces that whatever uses that license also has to become part of the free software, and in this case, free culture. You can read the entire document here. To agree to this document, please add your name to the authors list in a Git, Git transaction where you indicate in the Git log message that you consent to the CLA. You only need to do this once, and you can do it in your first commit to the repo. Okay, so that's the disclaimer on the GitHub README page. Of course, I will include the link to this page uh, and the video's description. And now let's just take a look at Monique and see what we can make with it. Or rather, what are the factory presets? Because I don't think I'm capable of creating some very interesting sounds on my own right now. So I can try. I'm doing random stuff. Ha 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 ha! 
Interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. There's like envelopes for many, many parameters and LFOs and like, wow. Uh, I'm very unfamiliar with the layout yet and I'm just doing random stuff trying to figure out what's happening and interesting things are happening, that's for sure. All right, let's take a sweep at the factory presets and see what we can hear in there. Maybe I'll save this. Save as alpha zero one. All right, let's see. These are sequences. Interesting. Let's see what happens if we play this very low. Well, that's a glitch fest pretty much oh I like this one I think that kind of patch would work really well in a live performance because there's, yeah, you can have expression and yet there is a lot of built-in motion. 
I don't know how to use like uh, MIDI CCs or yeah. Um... Oh, there is a view of oscillosc. Oh my goodness, there is a view of well, a lot of things going on inside. Okay, so we can see outputs of filters as well as oscillator and main output. Also output of the equalizer and amplitude envelope. Okay, it says filters and filter one modulation, filter two modulation, filter three modulation. Interesting. broken flute. There's a lot of reverb in this. Almost too much, I would say. But we can change that. Yeah, it's all wet. There's a lot of stuff. Nice screeching sounds, I like that. Machine.
There's some aliasing. Aliasing or distortion, I'm gonna turn down the volume. This patch is called Morpheus, and uh, it it's a bit painful. Let's see what happens if I play it on a lower octave. <laughs> That's interesting. Sounds a lot like an electric guitar. The distortion is cranked. Let's see what happens if we turn it down. That's nice. weird. Let's see if this will sync up in video editing. <laughs> There's a lot of cool lead lines that can come out of this synth and basses. I wonder if someone made a drum. Oh, there's a sequenced melody in here. 
All right. Highs are painful. <laughs> oh, maybe because of the resonance and EQ being fully turned up. Okay. These are a little bit painful at times. Huh. Yeah, also the volume varies quite a bit between these presets. I think someone should go through all of them and make sure they sound at the same e volume. Interesting, fun with a fem synthesis. <laughs> hmm. Oh, reverb can be panned left and right. Interesting. Oh, okay, so that's how we we have two knobs in one. We can click and we can change to a different knob. All right, interesting. Again, this is crazy loud. LFO. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't make a sound. Ah, because it was turned on. Ah, also because it's just a saw wave. Actually, it's not a saw wave, it uses a fem, but... Okay. Let's end it here, because I can keep playing with these more and more. Monique has gone open source. Um, follow the Surge team to find what's gonna happen with it more. It's not stable yet, and it's available as a standalone... Um, as a standalone program, as well as a VST3 plugin. It's licensed under GPLv3 or MIT. Uh, yeah, and it's available on GitHub. In the Surge Synthesizer project under Monique Monosynth Repospo Repository and I'm going to of course link that in the video description. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was worth your time. I would also like to thank everyone who is supporting my work financially. Money. If you dear viewer would like to join these people and help me keep making videos like this one, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa where you can support me with a monthly donation. Every little bit counts because they add up and that really makes a difference. Now go and make some music. Yeah, let's see what happens with Monique. Where does it go from here? I've heard the, the, the Surge developers have some crazy ideas about where to go next with it after it's stable. Mm. 
because they had to port it from an older version of Juice to a much, much newer one, because I think the project was not developed for some time. And that's probably that's why Thomas decided to open source it. 